In this chapter, we're going to talk about track mats and stencils. And both are ways to make parts of a layer transparent and other parts opaque, and then some kind of gradation and transparency and opacity between them, if that's what you want. In this lesson, we're going to focus on track mats. Follow along, go to Working Files, After Effects Projects, and then open up 1101 Track Mats. Now I'm going to explain track mats, but it'll make a whole lot more sense once we start doing it. A track mat can be a graphic, a still image, text, or a video clip, and then you connect that mat to a layer, and then the luma, or the transparency of the mat, determines the transparency or opacity of the layer it's applied to. I know it sounds a little confusing, but we'll clear things up in just a moment. What we're going to do here is we're going to put a clip on top of here and then make parts of that clip transparent. And I've got this background here so that it's pretty obvious. When we make parts transparent, you'll be able to see that transparency. So let's just add, let's say, the gondolas above this, this video clip of the gondolas, provided by Digital Juice from their stock footage library. And now that covers up the layer below it, as you'd expect. I'm going to put some text on top of this. You can do that too. Click on the Type tool here and just type down here. I'm going to say Venetian. Gondolas, like so. And I'll just make it a little bit larger here, pressing the V key and kind of make it bigger because I want to be obvious that this is going to be a transparent area here. What we need to do now is somehow connect this text layer with the gondolas. We want this text layer to define transparency and opacity of the layer it's connected to, which will be the gondolas layer. And the way you do that is you apply a track mat. So you need to find the track mat feature. And if you go down to toggle switches and modes here, you can switch between the switches and the modes, like that. Now there are the modes. You can also access modes simply by right-clicking here and saying columns and adding modes, and that'll add modes to the side like that. But it's easier just to switch back and forth. So I'm going to right-click again, say hide this, go down here and say toggle, switches and modes, and now there are the modes. And the modes always come in this group of three things, the blending mode, the preserved transparency option, and the track mat. But our topic here is the track mat, so that's what we're going to focus on here. Now, when you apply a track mat to a layer, that track mat is always directly above the layer you're applying it to. So notice there is no track mat option for layer one because there's nothing above it that you can apply to the layer. So down here in layer two, the one that we want to work on, the one we want to apply a track mat to, there is the option to apply a track mat using this layer and only this layer. You can't choose a layer way up above here. For instance, if you have 50 layers or something, you can't choose one 20 layers above this one. You can only do the one directly above it. All right, to apply a track map, we go over here and click this drop-down list. You have four options, alpha or alpha inverted, luma or luma inverted. You typically use alpha when you're working with something that has an alpha channel like this, some transparency. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to click on alpha mat like this. And what does that do? It makes the text opaque. Wherever there's opacity in the mat, that area remains opaque so that you see this layer. You don't see the layer below it. Then everything else becomes transparent, so you see the layer down below it here. Also notice a couple of other things here. When you apply the track mat, you get these little dots here. This one here indicates that this is the guy that the track mat's been applied to. And this one indicates that's the track mat itself. And also notice that the eyeball has been turned off now, which you need to do automatically. If you leave that back on, then it destroys your track mat there. So we'll just let it be turned off, which is what happens when you apply the track mat. So if I go over here and go alpha inverted, what's going to happen? So the text will become transparent, showing the yellow layer below it, and everything else will become opaque, like that which is not necessarily a bad thing. It looks kind of cool, right? One of the great things about this is that you can animate it. I can take the text, for example, just click on that, and I can move this guy around like so. We're going to talk about animating track mats in the next lesson. Well, we're not limited to working with only one track mat per comp, so let me show you how to do this. I'm going to switch this thing back so it's no longer inverted because we're going to put something on top of it. I don't want to see the gondolas there. I just want to see the background. So let me add, let's say, a street scene here on top of all of this, and that'll cover everything up. Then I want to add some text here, so I'll just go back to the Type tool and type in something like Street Scene. And make that guy a little bit larger as well. There you go. Like that. Okay. And now I want to have this over the street, so I really want to see these people. So I'm going to grab that video clip and move it up a bit. And I want to move it up relative to our Venetian gondolas text, like so. So that works out okay, I think, just for our purposes here. Now I'm going to apply a track mat here. I want to have that street scene text define the areas of opacity and everything else be transparent. So I go to your track mat for the street scene and say alpha mat street scene, and boom. Now we have two different things creating these transparencies and opacities above that same background. So you can do that. All right, I want to sort of undo this. I'm going to add something else that doesn't work with transparency, something that works with opacity. We've got the stained glass here. Looks like that. I'm going to put that above here instead of the text. So I'm going to drag that below the text. 
and above the street scene like that. I'm going to take the street scene, I'm going to make it back to normal here, so it's not only half the screen, so I get on here and click reset so it goes back to normal. But what I want to do is I want to apply the mat to the stained glass. I want the stained glass to serve as our mat. Now you notice that we're still at the track mat alpha, so why isn't this thing working? Because there is no alpha channel here, this is all opaque. This is just a photograph, so it's all opaque there, but there are areas of dark and light. So first of all, I need to go over here and switch this one off, and then I need to go back and switch it down to Luma. Now areas inside that stained glass image now define the opacity and transparency. You can see that the black areas, the dark areas, are transparent, and the bright areas are opaque. And if I switch that, instead of Luma normal, and make it Luma inverted, and areas that are black now are opaque, they're showing the street scene, and areas that are bright now are transparent, they're showing the layer beneath it. So when you use track mats, you can use the alpha channels in the track mats, or just use the luma values. I want to switch over and show you some video clips that also work as track mats. Go over to here. I've got a whole bunch of video clips here. I'll show you all three of them. Got the smoke here, the smoke comes in, like that. And then we've got this graphic, like so. And we've got this fire that comes in. Each one of those can be used as a track mat. There's no transparency here, so use the Luma values to define how this works. I'm going to go down here. We're going to start with the one on the bottom here. We've got the gondolas. we got that solid layer behind us. This time it's blue. There's the gondolas. We're going to apply the track mat down here to the gondolas. So I click on None. Instead of None, it's going to be Luma mat. And now that fire is going to come in here above there. I'll go in a little way so you can see it coming in. There it is over there. And you may think that's not all that distinct, and that's one of the things about working with opacity as opposed to transparency. You can make it a little more distinct by adding an effect to it. So I'm going to go here, and I'm going to go apply an effect to it. I'm going to go over to effects and presets. I'm going to look up curves, kind of my de facto way to deal with luma and contrast. But I need to curves and drag that to that layer. And to increase contrast, you just lift up the curve there, drop the curve here, and notice how things are getting a little more obvious there, and then you can adjust the brightness here like that. So if you want to make something a little bit more obvious, you can always apply an effect to it like that, to the layer that's transparent here, right? But it's being used as a track map. All right, let's just switch on down to this next one. I'm going to use this one instead. All I have to do is drag it down here between the two, and it automatically picks up the Luma track mat here. You can see through it as well, working the same way. If I invert it, you'll see the opposite there, like so. There we go. And I'll show you the last one here with the smoke. Drag that one down here above gondolas, replacing that other track mat. Now that's the smoke coming in. You see it going across the screen like that. And again, you can apply, let's say, curves to that. I'll take curves and apply it to the smoke here. And bring up the contrast on that a bit. And you can see you can make it a little more dramatic as well. So you can use video clips. And it works nicely if you've got a video clip that has a black background with some kind of thing coming in on it. To also be a track mat. So that, folks, is how you create track mats here inside After Effects.